All right, so today I want to show you the top 10 dominant genes in ball pythons. And when it comes to ball pythons genes, there's essentially three different types of genes. There's a recessive gene. With a recessive, you can't see one copy of the gene. You actually need two copies to see a visual effect as far as the color and the pattern of the snake. And then there's the co-dominant genes. With the co-dominant, you can actually see one copy of the gene, and you can actually have two copies of the gene, which they call a super. With co-dominance, you actually have a super. And usually the super looks completely different than one copy of the gene in most cases, although there are some exceptions. And then you have the dominant genes. And the dominant genes in ball pythons, for some reason, they don't have a super form. You can't have two copies of the gene. And sometimes there's different reasons as far as why you can't have two copies of the gene. And I'm actually going to go over the top 10 dominant genes in ball pythons as far as sheer numbers over on Morph Market. And I want to tell you why you can't make the super super with some of these dominant genes in ball pythons. All right, so I'm gonna jump over here on morphmarket.com and I wanna show you the top 10 dominant genes looking at the gene just by itself and then in combination with some of my favorite genes to make one of my favorite combinations using that gene. And I wanna start with the spider ball python. And believe it or not, the spider ball python is the number one most common dominant gene as far as sheer numbers over here on Morph Market. I came over here and added up all the spiders on the US section, the European section, and the South African section of Morph Market. And believe it or not, there's actually 20,629 spiders over here on Morph Market, which is kind of crazy. And the reason the spider is a dominant instead of a co-dominant, that's because the spider, the super form of the spider, is actually a lethal combination. So if you took a spider and bred it to another spider, and it doesn't matter what other genes are in the spider. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have asked me, hey, if I take a spider and mix it to this other snake that has all these other genes, but it still has spider in it is it still safe to pair those up and it's definitely not safe so if you take two snakes that contain spider doesn't matter what the other genes are maybe if you breed them together 25 percent of the time you'll get a super spider and most people pretty much across the board will agree that the super spider is a lethal combination as a matter of fact if you come over here on morphmarket.com and search for super spider you won't find any of them out of almost a quarter of a million snakes over here on Morph Market, no one has ever listed a super spider, and that's kind of a warning flag that you should probably stay away from breeding two spiders together. And as far as my favorite combination with the spider, I definitely have to say this is probably one of the ones on the top. Let me tell you, the spiders can make some absolutely breathtaking combinations. This is actually a super orange dream spider yellow belly, crazy looking snake. And essentially what you get is you get this really crazy looking pattern from the spider, and then the super orange orange dream really brings out these orangish yellows and then the yellow belly even brings out more yellow in this combination that is a pretty crazy combination all right, so here is the number two most common dominant gene in ball pythons, and that is the calico. And as far as sheer numbers, I actually added up all the calicos. There's 4,565 calicos over here on Morph Market. And this one is kind of interesting. I don't really know why there's not a super form of the calico, which is pretty interesting. I'm sure a lot of people have taken a calico and brought it to a calico, and for whatever reason, you just don't make a super calico. Calico. And I've actually seen some supers that look almost exactly like the single gene, but as far as calico, I don't think that's the case. And I don't think it's a lethal combination. So if you breed two calicos together, I think you're pretty safe. You just won't, you actually won't produce the super calico for whatever reason. I don't know what the genetics are, but it's just kind of one of those crazy things. And as far as one of my favorite combinations with the calico, that would definitely have to be the bamboo calico. Take a look at this crazy snake. I've actually produced some bamboo calicos here in my collection as some of Bobby's offspring. Bobby is the snake that I have around my neck at the beginning and the end of the videos. And let me tell you, when you actually wear calico into bamboos, you get some, probably some of the most amazing combinations. And it's weird with the bamboo calicos, a lot of times you'll start with kind of browned out sides and as the snake ages and matures, it seems like it gets brighter and brighter white until the, the well, as an adult, the sides are just glowing like a bright white, which is pretty amazing. 
So here is the third most popular dominant gene in all of ball pythons, and that is the champagne. There's actually 4,401 champagnes over here in Morph Market. And champagne is similar to the spider in that if you actually take a champagne and breed it to a champagne, you get a lethal combination. Although I have seen some super champagnes, and the super champagnes is, is, is as far as what I've actually seen, it's pretty much an all white snake. And as far as I know, no one has ever taken a super champagne and grew it up to an adult. There's something wrong with the super champagnes where it's not necessarily lethal. You can actually hatch them out and get a super champagne. I've seen them every once in a while, but the problem is, is they're not viable. They don't live past the hatchling stage as far as I've seen. I would definitely stay away from breeding champagne to champagne. And the other thing is, uh, I'm pretty sure the champagne is lethal with the spider. You definitely don't want to breed the champagne with the spider because that's a lethal combination too. So take a look at this. This is actually one of my favorite champagne combinations. And I'd say when, when it comes to champagne, it's really difficult to get a lot of pattern to break through the champagnes. And there's only two genes that can really bring some amazing pattern through the champagne. And that is the Anchi and the Leopard. As a matter of fact, you can actually use the Super Anchi too, which is kind of crazy. And you actually add both genes, the Anchi and the Leopard, and look what it does to the champagne. Let me tell you, if I was working with champagne, I would definitely work Anchi and and or a leopard into my champagne combinations. So here is the Hidden Gene Woman. The Hidden Gene Woman is number four. There's actually 2,425 Hidden Gene Womas over here on Morph Market. And the Hidden Gene Woma, as far as I understand, it's also a lethal combination, similar to the Champagne and the Spider, so you can't make the super with the Hidden Gene Woma. I've actually come over here and did a search for a Hidden Gene Woma, and there's no one has ever listed a super Hidden Gene Woma over here on Morph Market. And it's a really amazing gene. You can actually see these, and a lot of these hidden gene wobbles, you actually see these crazy tiger stripes in the pattern, which is kind of crazy. And my favorite hidden gene woma combination would definitely have to be the Inferno. Take a look at this. Let me tell you, I would probably invest in the Inferno just to get combinations that look like this. Essentially what the Inferno is, the, the Inferno is the hidden gene woma with a combination of the yellow belly, which brings out some yellow, and the pastel. The pastel and the yellow belly together can really make super bright yellow snakes which is kind of crazy and technically the inferno also has granite in the mix which kind of pixelates some of the pattern on the side although i have actually seen some infernos listed over here where people have dropped the granite and just made the hidden gene woma pastel yellow belly and called that combination the inferno so here is the Woma. The Woma is kind of interesting because you actually have the Woma and the Hidden Gene Woma. And as standalone genes, they look almost exactly the same. Although the difference between the two is when you actually take the, the, the Woma or the Hidden Gene Woma and you mix it into other combinations, they definitely mix differently with other genes. So when the Hidden Gene Woma first came out, it looked exactly like the Woma and everyone thought, hey, this is the Woma. And then you start breeding it with other stuff and you find find out that sure enough it actually makes different looking combinations when you work it in with the same gene and that's why they call it the hidden gene woma because it's like the woma except it's kind of the hidden gene that <laughs> you really can't tell that it's the hidden gene woma until you breed it into other combinations kind of a play on words with the name but the woma is also a lethal combination similar to the other ones a lot of these that have lethal combinations are considered to be in what they call the spider complex so you definitely want to avoid breeding two of them together. Sometimes you can actually breed certain ones together and have viable offspring breeding together some in the spider complex. As a matter of fact, I actually did a video about the spider complex and all the genes and I put up a whole table of all the combinations, which ones are lethal and which ones are not. But in most cases, the super form of most of these are actually lethal. So when it comes to Woma, I actually wanted to show you the difference between the Woma and the hidden gene Woma and that is when you mix it with lesser 
Lesser. So take a look at this. I actually pulled this up. This is the Woma and the Lesser. And essentially what this looks like, this almost looks kind of like a Lesser. The Lesser is a really bright snake and a lot of times it'll have really defined sharp contrast all through the snake. So it's, it's kind of like a Lesser that has kind of a jumbled up pattern from the Woma. But here's what happens if you take the hidden gene Woma and you work it into the Lesser, you get a completely different looking snake. You actually get what's what's known as the soul sucker. That is the hidden gene Woma and the Lesser. So you can definitely tell the difference between the hidden gene Woma and the Woma. So here's another one I thought I'd bring up too because a lot of people are saying, hey, I just bought a Woma and you have to kind of be careful because there's actually a different species of snake that is called a Woma. As a matter of fact, this was actually listed over here on in the ball python section. This is definitely not a ball python. I had one of these at one time. This is actually an uh, Australian type of a snake completely different than uh, the ball python. This is uh, in the, I think it's in the same family as the blackhead, really close to the blackhead, although it doesn't get really as big as the blackhead. They're both Australian snakes and they're not ball pythons. So this can get a little bit confusing. So when you're talking about Woma, you might want to mention, I actually bought a Woma ball python versus just a Woma because some people can confuse them. So here is another gene, the confusion. The confusion is kind of interesting because I kind of group the confusion with the static and the acid. I'm convinced all three genes are the same, although some people might disagree. They, they might consider them different lines of the same thing. So there's actually 253 confusions, 89 statics, 283 acids coming in at 625 for a total combining all three genes as far as the sixth most popular dominant gene and this one's kind of interesting too because all three genes are really new on the market and as far as what I've actually seen no one has successfully bred a confusion to a confusion because a lot of times with new genes everybody's waiting on the females to mature and if you actually do produce something that's a little bit different a lot of times you actually have to take that and breed it to something else to prove it out and show that all the offspring are confusion the acid or the static and as far as I know no one has produced a super that has been proven out as far as breeding it to something else and this one I'd say might be similar to the leopard there's a lot of debate on whether there's a super leopard or not and the super leopard a lot of people think it looks exactly like the leopard so if you actually produced a confusion that was a super that looked exactly like a single gene it may be a little bit complicated to figure out if you actually produced it and then to figure out which one is which and prove them up. So as far as I know, this is still a dominant mutation, but the I, I think the jury's still out on this one. It could be co-dominant. We just haven't proven it out yet. All right, so as far as my favorite confusion, that would definitely have to be something like this. Take a look at this. This is actually the pastel butter leopard confusion. <laughs> now, let me tell you, the confusion is pretty awesome. Essentially what it is, it's kind of like the leopard on steroids. It really shatters the pattern as far as mixing it in with other genes. And it's a dark gene too. And if you actually take the, the butter and the leopard and mix those together, sometimes you can actually do it with the lesser and the leopard. The, pretty much the lesser is the same as the butter. So the the butter leopard actually makes the stripes on the snake and it's kind of interesting you'd always don't get the stripes sometimes you get them and sometimes you'd always say maybe 50% of the time you get a striped snake and then between the leopard and the confusion you really darken the background and really jumble up the pattern that is a kind of a crazy combination all right, so here is the trick. The trick's coming in at number seven with 544 tricks over here on Morph Market. And the trick, essentially what it does is it really jumbles up the pattern. Sometimes the tricks can be kind of tricky because you actually look at them. Sometimes they can look really similar to a normal, but a lot of times you can actually pick out, you have a lot of pixelation in the sides. And you can see it really reduces and it really jumbles up the alien head appearance of the patterns on the side. Sometimes you can actually get 
get some bubbles on top and sometimes you, it'll look really close to a normal ball python and one of the, the pretty much my favorite trick combination is when you work it in with pinstripe and when you work it in with pinstripe you get is what is known as the cheetah and essentially what this is it looks almost exactly like a pinstripe except when you add the trick to it you get this really crazy jumbled up and it's like completely shattered probably one of my favorite combinations with the trick and the pinstripe all right, so here is the desert. The desert is actually coming in at number eight with 222 deserts over here. I'm more forgetting. The problem with the desert is that um, uh, the, the females are actually infertile. As a matter of fact, I, I just realized I didn't cover why the trick was actually a dominant instead of a co-dominant. And I'd say the trick is kind of up there with the, with the calico. I'm not really sure why the trick wouldn't have a super form, but if you actually come over here and search for super trick you actually won't find out and some of these you really don't know why some of these you definitely know they're lethal combinations and in the case of the desert it's completely different than all the other ball pythons the problem with the desert is there's a problem with the females so if you actually take a female desert and breed it to something else I've heard kind of two stories either the female will will actually die before it lays eggs which is really tragic or when it lays eggs all those eggs will be in for some reason it's just kind of one of the crazy things as a matter of fact when the desert first came out I saw some old YouTube videos and everyone was going crazy over the deserts and they're like this is the best thing ever I'm gonna breed it through my collection come to find out the there's a problem with the females and the whole project is tanked and now if you come over here on morphmarket.com every now and then you can find some deserts sometimes you can find some female deserts which are sold pretty much as pet only snakes and a lot of times you'll find some really Really flashy combinations with a lot of multiple genes and they're selling them really cheap because a lot of people consider them pet only instead of potential breeders for a breeding project so the desert actually there's there's 222 deserts over here so not a whole lot one of my favorite desert combinations is when you work it in with other brightening genes like this one take a look at this this is actually the desert the enchi the pastel and the spider look at that <laughs> I actually did a whole series on the desert i did a whole video just on the desert and let me tell you the deserts are if it wasn't for the problem with the females i would say the desert would probably be the number one gene in all the ball pythons as far as making some really impressive combinations and there's a gene that is really similar to the desert and that is the desert ghost and i actually compared the desert ghost side by side with the desert and it's come to find out that as, as, as it's a single gene they look almost exactly the same and in combination Nations, they look pretty much exactly the same. The problem is, is the desert ghost is a recessive gene and the desert is a dominant. So you can actually take a desert, breed it through your collection and produce a whole bunch of deserts in one shot versus a desert ghost. You actually have to breed it through your collection and then you'll get all hats. You'll have invisible genes kind of floating around. You won't be able to see one copy of the gene and then you have to take those offspring, breed it back to another hat or a visual to get the visual. So it's more of a long-term project versus something like this. All right, so here is the Wookiee. The Wookiee is coming in at number nine, and it's coming in at 156 Wookiees. So there's not a whole lot of Wookiees over here. And essentially what the Wookiee is, I think it's one of the best untapped dark genes in all the ball pythons. I've seen some crazy examples of Wookiee combos over here. Let me tell you, the prices are pretty high for Wookiees because the supply is pretty low. And if you're actually looking for one of the best dark genes, let me tell you, Wookiee is the way to go. And one of my favorite combinations is take a look at this. Look what you can do with a Wookiee, which is dark, and then you add black pastel, which is another dark gene, and then you add yellow belly. And take a look at this. This is a really beautiful dark snake pretty amazing almost like a jet black background and as far as why the wookie is a dominant instead of a co-dominant i am not sure it could be that a lot of people just haven't worked with it enough to breed a wookie to a wookie to see if there's a super form or it could be 
is similar to like the Trick or the Calico, or for some unknown reason, it's not lethal, but we just don't know why it actually won't make a super. So as far as number 10, I kind of threw one here at number 10. I kind of wanted to throw this in at the end. I kind of cheated here. I'm going to throw in a normal, otherwise known as a classic. And some people get confused on the, the normal wild type ball pythons. Let me tell you, you cannot have a super as far as the normal or the classic. Essentially what this is, this is a ball python stripped of all the genes. So this is like the base template without any other genes in the mix. So technically it's not a co-dominant gene. It's actually just stripped of all genes, but you can't make a super. I've, I've actually had some people ask me some of the questions under my videos and they're like, hey, how do I make a super normal? And of course, if you bring a normal to another normal, you get all normals, but you really can't consider it a super because it's essentially with no genes at all. And then I kind of wanted to cover two right at the end. I guess you can say this is 11 and 12. I'm just going to sneak them in. And the, the one of the ones I wanted to talk about is the pin stripe and for the longest time a lot of people thought the pinstripe was a dominant mutation there was no super but you can actually go over to morphmarket.com search for the super pinstripe and it'll actually bring up some uh, just a few super pinstripes that have been recently produced and I've actually seen some old time breeders get on the videos on YouTube and they're like you know when it comes to pinstripe there is no super it is definitely a dominant but I think there's still a big question mark and if you actually the finds what, what are actually listed as super pinstripes, most of them look exactly like a pinstripe. You can't tell the difference. Although I haven't seen anyone take a super pinstripe, breed it to something else, and produce a whole clutch of pinstripes over and over to actually prove that it's a super pinstripe. I would definitely like to see that breeding if it actually exists. And another one is the leopard. It's kind of the same way with the leopard. I've actually seen, you know, a lot of these old time breeders say there's no super leopard, and it seems like recently a lot of people are suspecting that there is a super leopard with two copies of the gene and they think the super leopard looks exactly like one copy of the leopard and if you actually go over to morphmarket.com and search for the super leopard it'll pull up a bunch of snakes but all those will be listed as possible super leopards i would definitely love to see someone take a super leopard breed it to something else and completely prove it out all right, so what is time for the question of the day? And Michael Ross asks, I have a super dwarf reticulated python that hasn't eaten since its last shed. Have you ever seen a super dwarf not eat? And that is a very good question. So I actually have a snake that is mostly dwarf and part super dwarf, only about 12.5% mainland. I have another one, Lucy, she's really big. She's like 50% Jampea dwarf from the island of Jampea. Let me tell you, reticulated pythons, especially when they're small, it seems like they're bottomless pits. They just eat every thing that you throw at them and they grow really super fast and they have a super high metabolism and it seems like they'll just eat and eat and eat and never stop and let me tell you once they get to a certain point they pretty much slow down and a lot of times they'll fast for sometimes a month or two sometimes my super dwarf reticulated python will go on like a two month long fast i offer rodents every single week sometimes multiple times a week and for whatever reason he just turns up his nose at those rodents which is you think it's kind of a unusual but I think it's pretty typical for your reticulated pythons and what for whatever reason they actually just come back on food and they'll start eating like crazy sometimes after a few weeks sometimes after a couple of months usually you know pretty much the longest my retics have ever fasted is pretty much about two months and they don't really lose much weight and let me tell you when they come back on food they can gain weight back really quickly so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video